Hey, this is Chuck Gallagher with Primo Productions, and I am here at Thrive with Jill, with Render. Mm -hmm. This is really cool, because in the month of March, I, I told the folks on my uh, newsletter list, because I'm producing two videos every week and sending it out, which is like a major thing, um, that we're gonna talk about AI, okay? And Render, uh, which by the way, highly recommend, is really kind of cutting edge on this whole concept of AI and avatars. You have a name for them? Synthetic media, Syn your digital likeness, hyper-realistic avatars, whatever buzzword you like the best. Oh my goodness, see, I couldn't, I couldn't remember all that. Okay, so. Here's the thing, what I wanted to do while we were here is talk with you just a little bit about the experience of creating the avatar, okay? Now, A, you guys at Render make it easy. We try, we try. Well, you, you do. It's the guy behind the camera right now, Moki, who really is the one who makes it easy. Hey, Moki, we appreciate this, by the way, thank you. Okay, and, and this is really not us, okay? I, this isn't, no, I'm kidding, this really is us, although. He's real. Oh, that felt so good. <laughs> okay. Mm. Wow, my quirkiness is really coming out here. But I went through the process of creating a digital avatar. Yes. Okay? And it was recorded on green screen, which is what you see here. Well, okay. you're probably going to see something else well, in the might. background, but you can replace it with anything. Right. Yeah, we might come back and forth. But anyway, but we did that, recorded the audio, and then once the avatar was created, it gives me now, as the creator, the opportunity to do one of two things, or two ways. Okay. Okay, so I can write script, and I can send the script into Render, mm -hmm. and you all will take that, use my digital or synthetic voice with my synthetic... Appearance. Appearance, thank you, or my digital avatar, and, and, and functionally, I will get back a, a, a video that is me delivering that script, or... Well, it's not you, as in you are here, but it's your digital likeness in a nice control environment. Okay, it's my digital, <laughs> it's digital me in a nice controlled environment, but it's really pretty doggone cool. It's okay. a, I'm biased, it's amazing. It's, it really is. We focus on the customized aspect of it. You can get stock avatars, you can get your cartoon version, but if you want your real likeness so that when someone meets you in person, they already have a physical presence associated with you, this is the way to go. Okay, so now, in addition to what I did, mm -hmm. I recorded my voice mm -hmm. in the studio, reading the material that I had, because I wanted it to sound more quirky like me. You're quirky? Well, that's what some people say. Just say. And you took my voice, the MP3, and then put that with my avatar. Yep. And so therefore my avatar, my digital likeness, is actually saying exactly what I said and recorded in my voice and normal tonation. Yeah, so you can do one of three things essentially. Two varieties, but three things. Once you have your digital likeness with us, you go into the application and you can either type out a script or copy and paste a script and then we use your generated voice, your AI voice, to match it with your AI video presence or you can upload an existing audio file. So let's say you've been on a podcast and man, you answered one question and it was whip smart. You extract that audio, bam, upload it to the app and pair it or Let's say writing isn't your thing, speaking is much better. You immediately go into the application, click record, and record your audio directly into the app. Okay, so here's, here's part of the reason we're here, okay? Because as we go through the process this month, the month of March, in talking about um, uh, 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 AI and so forth, mm -hmm. I went online and I created uh, a, a, a script, used the script and recorded it live in my studio, and I put the B-roll with it that I felt was appropriate mm -hmm. and said, okay, cool. So I've got this, I'm gonna consider putting it on YouTube, okay? But then I went in and I sent exactly the same script with exactly the same voice to you and you sent back my digital avatar, which is Digital Chuck saying exactly the same thing I said otherwise. Okay, now, here's the thing. You're working on your PhD, mm -hmm. right? And you're really studying this. 
I mean, like at levels that I can't comprehend. On geeky nerd levels that I love. Okay, good. So you're <laughs> smiling at geeking, and I'm like, I just like the idea that somebody knows this better than me. But what I did was I took the uh, digital version, mm -hmm. and I took the real version. I changed titles slightly. The videos clearly are different, mm -hmm. and I posted both of them to YouTube. Now, for some of you that are purists out there, it's like, oh my God, he posted something that was like a digital image, an AI image of himself, but didn't tell people that. And I didn't want to. <gasps> I know, can you believe it? For shame. I speak Kidding. on ethics, what? But I wanted to find out if someone looking at the video on YouTube was going to uh, say, I don't think that's exactly you. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't have quite the spontaneity. The hands aren't moving as crazy as maybe there you were do. no slurs on words. No slurs on words. I mean, you know, it was like perfection. Thus far, uh, when we finish this conversation, I'm going to show you the video, and I'll also let you know what kind of results I've gotten from the live version versus the digital version. And in all candor, it's a push. And there is no one, no one, Jill, that has made any comment that they believed that wasn't me. Yeah, I think the likeness is so realistic and it's not a perfect clone and it doesn't have the full range of motion or the full vocal range because it's an avatar, right? right. It's not exactly you. But what I am geeked out about in my research is doing tests on people watching real Jill on video, avatar Jill doing the exact same script and Avatar Jill, who discloses she's an avatar at the beginning, doing the exact same script. And I'm measuring it on levels of engagement, on levels of trust, and on levels of learning retention, and then doing biometric facial expression analysis and eye movement analysis so I can tell you exactly on average over hundreds of participants at what point in human Jill video the eyes divert, so you need to introduce a visual stimulus. At what point in avatar video do the eyes divert need a visual stimulus? At what point in the disclosed avatar video do the eyes divert and need a digital stimulus? And I can tell you then if, oh, the avatar video is 80% as engaging, but 100% as effective in the learning component, well, if learning's your goal, you have a quick production solution now. That data excites me, clearly. Okay, so <laughs> here's the thing. For what we're doing today, the first thing I want to do is I wanted to introduce the idea of render the fact that I'm a client, the fact that I'm actually using this because, I, okay, I geek out, but for different reasons. Of course. Okay. But I like playing with these things because this is the world that we're in. And if something were to happen, I mean, you can tell I'm going to plan it a while, but if something were to happen, but I wanted to continue to be relevant in the space, I've got a digital I got digital me that has the capability of doing that. So many possibilities. You're on a plane, you get delayed on travel, you can't get into a studio when you want, you have to have an unexpected surgery, all of those things from a practical life standpoint. And then there's the business case. When you look at your customer life cycle from start to finish, all your communicative touch points, where are you not using video, but you know it would be strategic, but you don't have the time to do it sure. real Chuck. This is now a strategic move for a fundamentally different channel of communication that enables you to add multimedia elements to your existing touch points. Okay, so everybody that's watching this video, you'll understand that when you see the video that I'm gonna show you, you're gonna see digital Chuck. Now, the one thing that I think we need to think about, and let's use the year or so, because you'll right. finish your PhD in December. Yeah, the data Yay. should be in in about four months though, and I'm so excited. Okay. So I, the one thing that I think really is interesting is to be able for you to be able to help us mm -hmm. understand at what point do the eyes diverge? At what point yeah. does there need to be different visual stimulus? Because one of the keys to keeping people engaged in video is having it, um, having enough visual stimulation that people stay with you. And, and I don't care whether it's an avatar or, or us live. No one wants a talking head for right. the whole time. So if we're not doing something that's going to visually stimulate the audience, we're going to lose the audience. And that's the reason the average demo video only gets watched 31 seconds. There's not a strong enough hook. There is not a strong enough reason uh, or solution that you're providing. And there's not visual stimulation. 
Um, the average TV program probably is about three to four seconds before something happens yeah. to keep people visually stimulated so they stay with Bridgerton or whatever it happens to be they're watching <laughs> on Netflix. Well, when you think of it from a neuroscientific standpoint too, the way we process information in our brains when we're on kind of status quo mode or when we start in that information zone out mode is fundamentally different from when we're actively processing for learning. And so changing the status quo, which is if the status quo is a talking head, changing some visual stimuli, adding text, adding an extra image, throwing in your avatar, putting it side by side with you so people are confused, whatever it is, having that variety changes the status quo. And since our brains are wired for survival, any change in stimulus, it immediately picks up on. So it's kind of a neuroscience hack that you go into how you design those videos too. Okay, so here's the thing. We're talking about artificial intelligence, and this is, this is the tip of the iceberg. It's 2023. I, I cannot honestly imagine by 2030 oh, geez. what the world will be like. And, and in fairness, how our content can live on in a really practical way that benefits people uh, perhaps long after we're gone. You're going to be here longer than I am, but you know. You never know. <laughs> well, I, I'm taking that one to the bank. Hey, Jill, thanks for the time. Thank you. Thanks for Render being able to do this and create this and create this conversation. No, I appreciate it, Chuck, and thanks all of you for tuning in.